Hello and welcome to Gabbit Media. I'm Grant Abbott and today we are making a winter wolf. This will be the first video in a short video series about going from sculpting right through to 3D printing. In this particular video we'll be looking at making the base mesh and base meshes are the starting points for your sculpt where you start adding the detail sections. So this video will be part of two different playlists, a sculpting playlist and a 3D printing playlist. So check the description for those. Also, if you haven't already, check out my character course. Again, links in the description. So whenever you sculpt, the first step is to get the basic shape and be happy with it before you add any detail. Now there's lots of different methods for doing this. There's the skin modifier and metaballs. See the sculpting playlist for more information on those and links in the description. You can just build basic primitives, so the basic model out of blocks and cubes and cylinders or whatever, and then join them together and remesh them. There'll be a video on that soon. And the last method is the simplest method, and you just literally get a ball and you try and sculpt out the shape. So we're going to look at that in this video. This method is really good if you've got background images, so it gives you a guideline to sculpt around, and the shape is fairly simple with no details kind of sticking out, so a nice simple silhouette, especially good for 3D printing. So here I am in the basic Blender scene. I'm in version 2.92 alpha, but if you're using 2.8, I'll point out the differences. So first of all, let's get our background images in. And here you can see my reference where I've drawn a wolf. So I'll just click and drag that in. Now you can see it's in a weird angle, so we can just make sure that's selected and press Alt-R and Alt-G. So that removes any rotation and removes any grabbing or movement. And then I can press R, X, 90, which will rotate in the x-axis 90 degrees. Then press enter. Let's just quickly go to wireframe so I can see it nice and easily and don't have to worry about my cube. To front view with one on my numpad, zoom in a bit and move it into position. So this is front view, which I'll be using this one here. So G to grab, move it into position. And that handy red line there is helping me. But if you haven't got that red line, it's a bit tricky and we haven't really got a very good line for the symmetry down the middle. What you can do is go across to the Object Data Properties for the empty, so this is an empty here. Object Data Properties, and we've got this transparency option. If I tick that, we can suddenly see the grid in the background. You can make it more transparent as well if you like. And I think 50% will help here, just so it's not too distracting. Zoom in a bit further, G to grab, and let's move that into the middle. Okay, so quickly, let's talk a bit about background images. First of all, it's really handy if you can draw. So if you want to learn to draw, check out my Kickstarter link in the description. And it's learning to draw by creating game art. Secondly, it's helpful to draw one image out from side view, let's say, or front view, depending on which is the most detailed. Then once you've got that, draw some lines in so you know that these different areas are going to line up. So anywhere where there's an obvious protrusion or something like that that you need to highlight. So in this case, the top of his leg here and the pause, for example, and obviously the top of the shape and the bottom of the shape. If you want to use mine and you want to follow along with Sculpting the Wolf, which I'll have other videos on their way, then check out the link in the description. Okay, so that's the front one into position. Let's get the side one. So we'll Shift D to duplicate. The duplication is right on top of the other one. So we can R, Z, 90, and it will rotate around 90 degrees in the Z axis going up and down. Press Enter. Let's go to side view now to line this one up. So this is the one we want. I can press G to grab and constrain it to the Y because I know it's the right height and get it roughly in the middle around there. So there we have it. We've got our two references roughly in position. I need to move this one back, G then X, and move that back. I like to have my sculpting object in front of the two rather than have them overlapping. So if I go to top view here, G then X overlapping like this. So you can just see this sort of corner here which does work, but I prefer to actually have it kind of in the background. So if I come out again and grab this one, G, then X, move that across the side, and this one, G, then Y, and move it backwards, I can then start sculpting in front of them just here. So I can go to side view and sculpt and front view and sculpt, and it's always in the background, just like this. So for this method, having background images set up like this, I think is really important because the blobbing out method, one of the problems with it is that it's very hard to kind of picture the whole shape when you're doing it. So having good reference makes this a whole lot easier. If you haven't got background images, then I suggest using one of the other methods because you can easily step back and move things around, but it kind of keeps its form much better, whereas this can go wild and blobby and weird very quickly. Okay, so back out of wireframe mode into solid mode. I'll select my default cube and I'll press Control 4. So I'm turning this into a ball. So Control 4 like that. 
What that does is a shortcut to adding a subdivision surface modifier. So modifier properties over here, you can see my subdivision surface modifier has four levels. And I want to apply this because at the moment, if I press tab on my keyboard, you can see it's still just this cube shape. So I can't sculpt on it yet. I must apply this. So back into object mode with tab. And if you're in 2.8, you'll have an apply button there. In 2.9, it's down where this drop down arrow is and you can press control A as a shortcut. So with my mouse over the modifiers, I can press control A and it's applied it. Now, when I go into edit mode, you can see this is the actual geometry, not just a basic cube with a modifier. So I'm happy to go into sculpt mode. So I'll just go back to object mode. I can now go to the sculpting workspace up the top here and you should see something similar to this. So if I scroll down, it's got all these brushes that come with 2.92 alpha. Your brushes might look slightly different to mine, depending on the updates. I'm not using anything special in 2.92. This should work fine in 2.8. Okay, so the brushes we'll be using, if I scroll back up, there's the grab brush and the snake hook tool. You can probably just stick with the snake hook tool, but if you're finding it awkward in any way, depending on your shape, the grab brush might be for you but I do like the snake hook tool. Okay, so I'll go to front view and what I'm going to need to do is try and line this up with this object in the background. If your object has symmetry, then do make sure you have the X symmetry ticked, then you will only need to do half your shape. Resize the brush with F and then start squishing it into position with the snake hook brush. So just squish it along into position like this. I'll zoom in a bit on that, pull this leg out and squishing it around. Now, this is the next problem you'll see. So if I come out and then into perspective, you can see that it's not following the shape at all. So it's really important that you switch between front mode and side mode. So one for front mode on your numpad that is, and three on your numpad to go to side mode and then to start moving it into position on each of these. Remember F to resize your brush. So I'm moving it into position and just following that outline very roughly at the moment. Okay, so this looks nothing like it at the moment, but it is keeping roughly to the profile. Let's just tidy that up a touch. And we're keeping roughly to the profile here as well. Now comes the next bit that you'll need to do. If I start pulling out from the top here, can you see how my brush changes so I know the angle it's at? And then I can pull out this top bit here. But can you see how my mesh is stretching loads. Now I could use Dime Topo for this, but I know that they're getting rid of that soon in favor of the sort of remesh option. So I'm going to show you the remesh workflow now. The remesh options are in here and you've got the voxel size, which is the important bit and obviously the remesh button. Now, if we press Shift R, we get this grid and we can see how detailed to make our mesh. So this will end up being the faces on our mesh. So if I go to about here, so for me it's 0 0.03, it might be different for you depending on the size of your object. So 0.37 or 0.38 is fine. And then to actually remesh, we press Control R. And you can see the remesh is the same size as this grid when I press Shift R. So Shift R and Control R are the important keys here. Okay, so now I can start reshaping again. So reshape like this, roughly. And then once again, Control R, and it will remesh. So rather than using Dine Topo, which will sort of add geometry as you go, you just add geometry and press Control R every now and again. So switching between front view and side view. Ah, now this is another problem you'll see, and it's really common that you end up with weird shapes like this. It's not really a problem. Let's go back to front view. You just squish stuff out and pull it in and Control R to remesh. Let's go to top view now just to sort this shape out a bit. Smooth out with Shift. So we have to sort of blob it into position, control R to remesh, smooth it out with holding down shift, do the same on the back. So holding down shift and pulling out. Okay, so I've lost my profile a bit. So that's when we go back to side view and we can start pushing it back into position. Now we've got that sort of solid shape that isn't hollow. And that's a problem you might come across. So let's say I've got a very small brush and I try and pull out some weird hump here. I'm pulling it out, but actually it's pulling out from both sides like this. So just watch out for that. One way you can get round that, if I undo that, is come away from side view, go into the middle and pull out, and then go to side view, then you know you're actually pulling out from the middle like that. Not that he wants some weird spike on his back. So I'll undo that, and I'll continue my shape. So I'll do the same thing at the top here. I'll come around to the top, resize my brush slightly, and pull out from the middle here. 
and then go to side view and then start pulling out, knowing that this is actually pulling out the middle. And can we see this distortion here? So we press Control R to remesh. Resize my brush, come around to the front, make sure I've got that bit there, back around to the side, and we're getting into position now. Okay, so Control R to remesh, let's go around to the front and start moving the shape once again. Using the smooth brush just to smooth things out a bit. A lot of the time I'm sort of tapping away at the object like this, tap, 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 rather than one big squish, one big squish, because you get those sort of problems. So back to front view, and then I'm tapping my way in and tapping my way out. When I say tapping, I'm using a pen tablet, you see, so uh, you tend to sort of tap with that, but the same with the mouse, you'd be tapping the left mouse button. Okay, let's go around our object and see how we're getting on. Now it's not too bad at the moment. We're getting that sort of blobbed out shape. We'll have to come around here and just by eye pull these in, knowing that that's the tail, so it's gonna be narrower. But we haven't got a back view, not that we really need one. So Control R every now and again to remesh, smooth out if we have to, and then double check from your viewing angles. Do remember Control R to remesh. And also remember Shift R to get this grid. So if you're in a position where you think I can start adding a bit more detail now, let's make that grid a touch smaller, maybe to 0.27 instead, around there, and Control R to remesh. And you can see it's a lot finer now. That's especially useful for things like the ears. So for the ears, in my case, so they're two small protrusions. I should be able to pull from here and outwards. Let's control R that to remesh and then pull out again. So somewhere around there, but they're not separated as you can see. So let's undo that and make sure you're coming out from that angle there. Back to side view and let's pull them out properly this time. Control R to remesh and let's see how that's looking instead. That's a bit better. So the problem areas you're going to have with this method are where there's a bit more detail and undulations like this in the mesh. So at that point, going to this sort of 3D view is a good idea. Also another thing that you might find helpful is maybe bringing out your outliner up the top here and changing it from the outliner to the, the image editor. We can then open up our wolf image just so we've got a view there of our wolf. It's not so important, but if you're close in, you might just suddenly want to think about what your shape is. And at this point, I like to use my draw brush. So with the draw brush, I'm going to use that with wireframe so I can see exactly where my details are. So wireframe, and let's go to front view this to start off with. And you can see I'm out with my shape, but I should be able to make my draw brush a bit smaller and dig in with the shape and pull out with the shape. So adding geometry is normal, but to dig in is holding down control. Okay, I think this will help more with the snake hook, so I'm going to use that again and just pull that in. So jumping between the draw brush now and the snake hook brush. Got this middle section here, as you can see. Hopefully you can see this. It's a little bit tricky to see on screen with wireframe. Z to get this pie menu, and you can quickly go back to solid mode. There's a bit of smartening up to do, so we can start drawing that in. So again, I'm looking at this up here, and we want a digged in section, <laughs> a sort of crevice in here, and that's where the draw brush is gonna be handy. Also along here, where that sort of leg goes, and then it goes around in a circle there. So I can start digging in this section. And again, if I go to side view and wireframe, so Z to wireframe, I can see where I need to line up and draw a bit in there and make sure it comes down to the bottom in the correct position here, just using my draw brush. Don't worry about how far it's gonna stick out and things at the moment. As soon as we go to solid mode, Z then solid mode, you can see, and that's not too bad, so I can just smarten that up and smooth out with shift. A bit more digging in needed here. And we're getting there with our base shape. We just need a bit more at the top here. So let's go to front view, Z, wireframe, and just see what our jaw is doing. I do need a bit of a thicker jaw than I've got on my reference image, and this needs more building up. You can press G for shortcut to get to the grab brush. Let's go back to solid mode and see how we're getting on. And that's not such a bad base mesh. It's a nice free and fairly simple way of starting off your mesh. And now we can go to the sort of secondary level of detail. Okay, so hopefully this helped you out. Do check out the playlist in the description and my channel in the next few days for more on this Winter Wolf project right through to 3D printing. Thanks for watching. 
and I'll see you next time.